Good afternoon, everyone. People look at me differently. And I know Chelsea will understand what I'm talking about because we have prominent names. I'm partly here because of my last name. And I've inherited challenges and opportunities that I will not complain about. I have embraced my heritage. And I've come to understand that I have the power to control my own destiny. I have taken the principles that my grandfather has lived as his own, as mine. Foremost among them is to have pride in my African background and to be able to take control of my own destiny. I do not complain that people think of my grandfather when they see me, because I know my destiny is not the same as my grandfather. As same as for you, your destiny is not the same as your parents or your grandparents. We have the power to chart our own course. It is instead honoring that legacy by learning from the past and building upon what has been there before us. My goal is to inspire others to chart their own course. Africa Rising is an organization that I started with my cousin Kweku, who is here in the audience today, back in 2009. Our mission is not simple. Our mission is to change the perception of our continent, a perception that is skewed towards a continent rife with poverty, disease, dictators, and war. I am not here to deny that these things exist. However, I know that there are many more positive things that are happening which do not get highlighted in mainstream media. Africa therefore seeks to shine a light on the best of what the people in Africa are doing. By shining the light on the positive attributes of our people, we can inspire a new generation to empower themselves and to believe in themselves and therefore inspire their community. And this is why I have worked with the likes of Joseph Peter and other like-minded individuals. The majority of our people live in rural areas and do not have access to good education, let alone extracurricular activities like sports, music, and debate in class. And at the same time, I know, because the majority of our people live in these rural communities, this is where some of the most smartest people live, yet they do not have the opportunities that we take for granted. I, with the help of like-minded people like yourselves, can inspire them and those around them in their community. We want the youth to, to, to learn more about themselves, to learn more about the things that they care about. And what we want to do is to empower them by leveraging the powerful tool technology can provide. And this is why we're building the Mandela Is Global Digital Platform. This will be essentially a campaign that will allow people to share what they are doing for their communities. I realize that the best way to honor my grandfather's legacy is to do what he has always done. Actually, no, to do what he has refused to do because people always put him on a pedestal alone. My grandfather worked to ensure that we will never forget those who sacrificed and died so they could achieve the freedom that he fought for, that he has watched blossom in South Africa and around the world. My grandfather wanted us to find the greatness in one another. This is a man who shook his jailer's hand upon release. This is a man that treated a regime who wanted to deny his humanity with dignity and with grace. I stand before you as a Mandela, but there's so much more to the story. The story may begin with the Mandela, but it will continue with the likes of Almedala and Ferronato, Andraka and Gupta. I've been invited to share my story with the audience, but the, my story is about the inspiration I see all around me. And that is something I would like to share with you today. I'd like to share this moment with Anoop Virk from Canada. Is she present today? <laughs> Anoop was raised by a single mother who brought her to volunteer in a homeless shelter from an early age. When she was 16, she co-founded a project, Hello, helping everyone locate loved ones to help the homeless residents of Vancouver 
its poorest neighbors, find long lost family members. And since then, Anoop has assisted in reuniting over 260 family members. I'd like for you to meet Dana Al Medalla from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Dana felt limited by the educational opportunities available to her as a woman in her conservative country of Saudi Arabia. And so she created One Hand, One Heart. Dana's organization provides students, volunteers with the opportunities to teach others through live broadcasts, including orphans sick children, and illiterate adults. I stand before you inspired by my fellow African, Francis Aki from Uganda. Like many of us, Francis and his friends in Kampala found themselves spending a lot of time talking about ideas without ever implementing any of them. Inspired by the accomplishments of others, Francis decided to put his ideas into practice. He founded the Young Entrepreneurs Challenge, which is a youth leadership development program that develops the entrepreneurial talents of African youth with competitions, entrepreneurship workshops, mentorship programs, and seed funding. So far, Francis has organized and trained over 150 youth leaders in his community. I am proud to be in the company of Hector Ferronato from Brazil. Hector wanted to start an educational revolution on the environment in his home country. He realized only early on that most of the youth in his community didn't really care about the environment. And so Hector decided to start Piata's World to raise the level of environmental education for kids aged 7 to 11, preparing for the next generation to take care of the environment for years to come. Right here in the United States, we have Morgan Barron. <laughs> Morgan found it unacceptable, unacceptable that in a home state of Utah, one out of seven children go hungry. In response, she created Harmony Community Garden, aimed at helping to feed Utah's hungry and raise awareness about community gardening. <laughs> Last, but not least, from India, is Yash Gupta. When Yash broke his glasses and had to go to school for a week without them, he realized how dependent he was on his glasses on, for education. After discovering that more than 300 million people have vision problems, a majority of which are children, Yash created sight learning which distributes discarded eyeglasses from California to eye clinics overseas to give children in developing countries their vision back. Yash so far has distributed and sent over $100,000 worth of eyeglasses to 10,000 students across the world. I can't promise that these are the most exciting people here in the room. But I can tell you that I have been inspired by each and one of them. And I have been inspired by each of you here today. And I hope we'll grow together to continue on our mission to make this world a better place. I can tell you that I look forward to sitting with my grandfather and telling him about the wonderful people that I met here today. My family is watching. Your family, your friends are watching. We are being seen. We are being heard. I hope we will use our collective voices for making a positive change. All of us have ambitions. 
and goals. And all of us go through challenges in trying to achieve these goals. But that should never stop us from continuing to wanting to become triumphant. As you can see, you are not alone because we all go through challenges in life. I ask you not to see me as a privileged son of Mandela, but see me as a person like yourself who has started his own journey to achieving greatness. Join me as we celebrate Nelson Mandela Day and find the best way, the best sustainable way in giving back to our communities. Thank you.